For a thousand years, the Icelandic horse has been at the heart of life here on this rugged island. Until the 20th century, Iceland had very few roads. Horses were the only means of transport and doubled as a source of food. Life here was tough and unsentimental. The first horses came with the Viking settlers in the 10th century. These are their direct descendants, a medieval horse that's evolved to cope with the demands of life here. <laughs> it's true that they haven't really changed for a thousand years. These are the same kind of horses that the Vikings brought with them? Yes. We are not importing any horses because it's illegal. You may not import any horses. We just export horses, but it's just that kind of horses in the country. This is the annual horse sorting. All these horses spend the summer on the pastures together, and then every autumn they're brought down and they're sorted out which horse belongs to which farm and fed into these pens and then their farmers will take them and they'll winter at the farms they belong to. But because they spend such a lot of time out in the open up in the mountains together they're quite frisky, quite wild. And uh, Icelanders say that's part of the distinctive character of the Icelandic horse, that they have so much freedom that they're very spirited animals. So they're quite a handful to try and sort out. They have a lot of freedom in the heart. Like people, if you are just in a little place, don't see so long, not, not so wide, you are a little bit close too. But if you have all this area, all these mountains, this uh, difficult weather, uh, you get something in your soul. And it's also in the horse's soul. You have to try to understand them. And love them? and love them, of course. I think there are horses coming into this enclosure. I might have... Should I move around here? Yes. That's better. I don't want to get trampled. So I've taken refuge from the terrible weather to come in here and try Iceland's most notorious snack, putrefied shark. Tried it before. No. Can okay. you tell me a little bit about how it's made? I don't know if you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> you have to ferment it for um, 8, 12, 14 weeks. Okay. Then you take it and you wash it up and you hang it up for drying for another two, three, four months. There's a rumor or a, an old wives' tale that there's urine is involved in the process. That's not. Is that true or false? Yeah, it is true. It smells like um, ammonia, okay. and the smell is terrible when you're when you're fermenting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is chewy. Yeah. It's different, different. After you swallowed it, try the aftertaste. Maybe it's okay. That one was pushing the envelope for me. Oh yeah, yeah. It's not Iceland unless you try the fermented shark, is it? Do you think I could ride an Icelandic horse? Yes. Everybody can. Everybody can. Egert is picking me out a friendly horse, a calm horse, that's the key thing. And one that won't detect that I'm a complete beginner. You jump to my place, you put here and you jump. I've got so much long underwear on, I can't <laughs> bend my leg. And I'm holding this. Yes, yes. And then you go with the flow on the horse. Okay. If you're happy, Give it the reins. Okay. That's your way of saying the horse, I like you. Okay. I might just stay here and just sit here for two hours. <laughs> no. no you want to I know I'm going to love it. The horse is called Heckney, like David Heckney. 
Clinging on to Hockney for dear life, I join the riders heading uphill. The Icelandic horse doesn't have the economic importance it once did. Today it's respected as a link with the past, but its chief use is recreational. The pub quiz fact to know about Icelandic horses is that they have a fifth gait that other horses don't have. So regular horses walk, canter, gallop and trot. But Icelandic horse has a fifth called a tont, which is somewhere between a trot and a gallop. The ride culminates in the roundup. The last of the semi-wild horses are taken down from their summer grazing. And after long hours on horseback, the day ends with a celebration. A lot of people here are tourists like me, but a lot of Icelandic tourists have come from across the country because this is a this is a big moment, this is a big national celebration. And the guys in the fluorescent vests are the people who actually did the roundup today. And if you look very carefully, you'll see the bulge of hip flasks in a lot of jackets, or even huge bowls of whiskey lying around because having a drink and a song is the way they conclude the roundup.